Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious Father. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you. Thank you because of your love for us. Thank you for um, feeding us with all things that pertain to life and godliness. You begotten us in your love. And you want us to manifest you in creation. It is your desire that we manifest you in creation. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, our great teacher. Holy Spirit, I thank you for being faithful to you your assignment Jesus said that when you come you will remind us of all truth you will take that which is his and then reveal to us thank you for carrying out your assignment in our life Holy Spirit on behalf of my brethren around the world, I want to say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to briefly... discuss with us about something that for me is very very important it may not appear to be important to some but for me it is very very important that we get to know how to relate with the world within the real world is within us. The real world is within us. And we must know how to relate with this real world within us. And that brings us to considering The invisible. How do I relate with the invisible from the visible dimension? How do I relate with the invisible from the visible dimension? First, understanding what you who you truly are is is crucial, it's very important, very essential. You cannot relate with that world until your citizenship in that world becomes a living reality in your consciousness. The number one step to take in being able to relate with the world within, with the invisible, is to know that you are a citizen of that world which is within. And the world within is the kingdom of our Father. The world within is our Father. At this point, It will be very, very important for me to mention that our relationship with the world within, 
our relationship with God's civilization is on the basics of knowledge. Because we are talking about an immaterial world. We are talking about an immaterial environment. We are talking about an immaterial realities. We are talking about an immaterial civilization. So, to relate with that world which is within the kingdom from this side of creation which is the visible creation knowledge is required and that is where many are missing it this is why we have in the world today false prophets false apostles who go around prophesying to people how that they are going to be great how that they are going to receive favor from God now I am not against prophecy not against that but I am saying that nobody can adequately engage the invisible the world within without knowledge your contact with the invisible is through your spirit and for your spirit to fully engage the invisible the knowledge of that civilization is required in our heart. The head of the church represents the invisible dimension for us. The Bible mentioned that when he ascended, he filled all things he filled it all in all. In other words, Jesus occupies all realms for me and you who are his body. So, in relating with the invisible world, you don't think of something outside of your being. You think in, time, in terms of something within you. Something that you are one with something that you are not separated from something that declares you to be it's visible now i am talking gently because i want to be able to pass my message across properly so i'm taking my time to explain what i'm saying now the same way we use the physical eyes to see physical things. The way you see, we use physical eyes to see physical things. We use physical ear to hear sounds here. Okay. Now I cannot use my the same physical eyes to see into the invisible because the physical eyes is designed okay after the fall to only see physical things visible things so anything that is not visible the physical eyes cannot see that can see it. The physical eyes only sees things that are visible to it. But I am talking about the invisible. For us to relate with the invisible and walk within the environment of the invisible from this visible side of creation, 
we must understand that it takes knowledge to do that. It takes knowledge to do that. Okay? The same way you cannot move your car without first having to put your ignition key, your key, your car key, you have to put your car key inside the ignition to start the car. That same way, the spirit you are, which is born of God, which is born, born again, which God declared to be a new creation, that spirit needs the knowledge of your sonship in your heart to be able to function in the invisible world. I want to say that again. You are a spirit. I am a spirit. Man is a spirit. The spirit we are, <laughs> you know, imagine how, imagine a physical body without the five physical senses. You know that that body will be useless in the earth, even though the body is alive. Physical body, imagine your physical body as you are now. Imagine your physical body without eyes, without nose, without ear, without sense of feeling, you know, without sense of hearing, sense of sight, sense of feeling. All right, the five senses. Imagine your physical body without the five physical senses all intact. The physical body will not be useful to people around it because they cannot talk to you and you will hear. And you cannot see them and you can't feel things. That same way, when knowledge, the knowledge of your sonship, the knowledge of your priesthood, the knowledge of your what priestly identity and kingship identity, both are what makes up our immortal identity. Once this knowledge is absent in our heart, the spirit we are finds it difficult to function in the invisible realm. Because the spirit you are needs the, the, the knowledge of your identity, the knowledge of your sonship, the knowledge of your kingship in your heart to be able to navigate its way within the invisible world. If you read Hebrew chapter 5, guess Hebrew chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. There the Spirit of God spoke through Apostle Paul and said that strong meat belongs to those who are of full age. Strong meat. Who, by reason of use, have exercised their senses. You see, I'm talking about activating our spiritual senses. Activating our spiritual senses. How do we see into the invisible? How do we relate with the invisible? The invisible is our realm. We are not absent in the invisible dimension. Those who think that they are absent in the invisible dimension do so because they have taken their physical body to be who they are. And so, because their physical body is in the earth, they conclude that they are absent in the invisible dimension. 
but we are not absent in the invisible dimension even though our physical body is here in the earth our spirit the spirit we are is everywhere i had to i i learned that in a very hard way the spirit you are is everywhere the spirit you are is not absent in any realm in any dimension you know your physical body can be in a particular country and and be absent in another country for example i am presently in nigeria i am presently in the country called nigeria what that means is that my physical body is absent in the US. My physical body is absent in Japan. My physical body is absent in any nation that I am not in now. My physical body is only present in Nigeria, in Africa continent. Apart from Africa continent, my physical body is absent in all other continents of the world. My physical body is in Nigeria. What that means is that because my physical body is in Nigeria, it is absent in all other countries of the world. So my physical body cannot be present within two countries at the same time. If my physical body is in the US, it must be absent in Nigeria. If my physical body is in Spain, it has to be absent in other countries. My spirit is not like that. The spirit we are is not like our physical body. The spirit we are is not absent in any nation. The spirit we are is not absent in any realm and dimension. The spirit we are is everywhere. The spirit we are is everywhere. How? The spirit we are is everywhere because the spirit we are is in God. And so, wherever God's presence is, the spirit we are is there. Wherever God's presence is, the spirit we are is there. Don't forget that we are talking about just a minute. Sorry. We're talking about activating our spiritual senses. Some time ago, I thought on this same topic. And I used a newborn baby to illustrate my point. When a child is born, the child is born with his eyes open this day, but unable to see. A newborn baby comes out from the mom's belly, having his eyes wide open. But if you wave your hand across the face of the baby, you will notice that the baby will not follow the direction of your hand. Because the baby, even though the eyes are open, does not see your hand. And then the baby begins to take in food. The more the baby is fed, the more the organs of the, the body of the baby gets developed, the more the senses, the physical five senses of the baby gets activated 
after some time, you wave your, you wave white, an object across the face of the baby. The baby will follow the direction of the object. At this point, the baby can now see. So when you move your hand across the face of the baby, the baby follows the direction of your hand because now the baby's sense of sight has been activated. The food the baby takes in, the milk the baby takes in, helps in activating the ability of the of the of the physical five senses of the baby which enables the baby to use them because nobody can relate with the physical things without the functionality of the physical five senses if your physical five senses are not active if they are not operational you can't relate with the with the earth. You can't relate with the earth dimension. There is nothing you can relate with without the help of the physical five senses. That same way, the spirit we are cannot relate, engage things within his own realm without his own senses being activated beside the physical five senses there are other senses beside the physical five senses so the spirit you are does not depend on your physical five senses to function in the invisible world the physical five senses are only useful here on the earth outside of the earth the physical five senses cannot function well because you cannot with the physical five senses engage immaterial things immaterial realities and Christ's unsearchable riches are not physical things. They are not material things, visible things. They are invisible realities. So how do you see into the invisible? How do we look into the invisible? How do we relate with the invisible? Because the way the earth is now, the present state of the earth demands that every child of God gets to know how to relate with his spirit environment. Everyone that is a believer, everyone that is born again today must come to this realization. Knowing how to walk in in and out of our spirit environment now paul said by the spirit that strong meat belongs to them that are full age he started that discussion by saying that those who use milk are unskillful in the word of righteousness for they are babes they are babies those who use milk. So there is a level, there is an aspect of the revelation of the kingdom that is referred to as milk of the world. I say that again. There is an aspect of the revelation of the finished work that is referred to as milk of the world. Then there is an aspect of that of the revelation of the finished work that is referred to as meat of the word or word of righteousness. The milk of the word helps us 
to understand how Satan was defeated. The milk of the word helps us to understand our rights and privileges here on the earth. Which is based on Jesus' death on the cross. The milk of the word teaches us our rights and privileges. It teaches us our spiritual supremacy over Satan and demons. The milk of the world shows us how Jesus became identified with man and died as man for man. The milk level of the revelation of the finished work teaches us how Jesus identified with man died as man for man for the redemption of man when peter was writing by the spirit peter said desire the sincere milk of the world that you may grow thereby desire the sincere milk of the world that you may grow thereby many are not able to understand that there's a difference between the milk of the world and the meat of the world or the word of righteousness there's a clear-cut difference between both both milk and meat of the word of god both of them are necessary in our growth don't forget that our growth is the receiving of knowledge we grow in knowledge spiritual growth is growth in knowledge spiritual growth is growth in knowledge he said till we all come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the perfect man efficiency till we all come to the knowledge of the perfect man so our growth is a journey into knowledge from one layer of knowledge to another layer of knowledge it is as we receive the knowledge of the finished work which is the revelation of god's glory revealed it is as we receive that knowledge into our heart that the senses of our spirit gets activated gets exercised receiving this knowledge is very very essential it is the heritage of every child of god it is the birthright of everyone that is born again the scripture says that it pleases god that all who are saved should come to the knowledge of the truth in the book of ephesians the spirit of god spoke and said he said till we all come i just picked that verse till we all come what what are we to come to till we all come to the knowledge of the perfect man you know why because christ our head represents us in all realms and dimensions so wherever christ is because he is your life you are the one that is there please catch what i just said now i remember i said earlier on that the spirit we are is not absent anywhere in creation the spirit we are is present in all realms and dimensions there is no aspect of the universe there is no aspect of creation eternity that the spirit we are is absent Jesus, the head of the church. All right? His presence is everywhere. He 
represents us in all realms and dimensions. So, because he is our life, wherever he is, be your life. In the mind of God, you are the one that is there because he is your life. This is the manifold wisdom I am sharing with us now. Christ is said to be our life. The Bible mentions, it says, Wherefore, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. So, Christ is our life. And because he is everywhere as the creator, he is everywhere because he is the one who sustains all things by the word of his power. So, wherever he is, in the mind of the Father, you are there because he is your life. Your life is what defines your person in the mind of God. So Christ is your life, is my life. That is for those of us who are born again. There are those who want to, who wants, who want everyone to believe that Christ is in everyone. No. His desire is to be in everyone, but he is not in those who have not received him, acknowledged him as their Lord. He is only in those who have acknowledged him as their Lord. That is the teaching of faith. If you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, you have to believe in him in your heart. There are those on earth today who have not believed in him in their heart. He is not yet in them. He is not yet their life. Even though he has been offered to them to be their life, but they have not received it. So, a newborn baby does not pray for his sense of hearing to be activated. A newborn baby does not pray for this, his sense of sight to be activated. They just need to feed him well. As they feed him with proper food, his senses get activated. And his senses needs to be activated because he cannot function in the earth without his physical five senses being fully activated. If any of the five senses malfunctions, the baby, the child, the man, the woman will be highly limited in, the, in his at work. So, absence of the knowledge of God's glory in the heart of a man is the reason for the malfunctioning of certain organs in the body. Now, but let's leave that now. God knows that Satan destroyed the human body. God knows that Satan seriously attacked the human body to permanently destroy it. God knows that Satan afflicted the human body with sicknesses and diseases because his aim was to destroy the body and to stop God from manifesting in the flesh. Because if there is no body to redeem, God will not come here in the flesh. Now, the way to restore what Satan destroyed, the way to restore the physical body, the way to restore 
organs that my functions in the physical body is by receiving into our heart the knowledge of the glory of God. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 says God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had shined in our heart to give to us the light of the knowledge of his glory. Why is God giving us the light of the knowledge of his glory? He knows that the light of the knowledge of his glory in our heart will activate the senses of our spirit which enables our spirit to engage the invisible world and to function properly, effectively, in the invisible world. Very, very important. We have to teach people what their identity is. We have to teach believers what their identity is. We have to show them what their identity is. Every believer needs the knowledge of his identity in his heart today. Every believer needs the knowledge of the finished work in his heart today. That is the only way to activate the senses of our spirit which enables our spirit to engage the invisible realm. Apostle Paul prayed for the Ephesian church. He said, when I heard of your love, when I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love towards all the saints, I began to pray that the spirit, that, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation be what? Be given. To you. In other words, he was actually praying for the activation of the oppressions of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And the way to activate it, Paul did not just pray. After he prayed, Paul taught them. Check the Ephesian church. Check his writings to the Ephesian church. Paul had to school them in the things, in the reality of Christ's finished work, Paul taught them. He taught them the realities of the finished work. It was Paul who told them and said that God raised us up together with Christ. If you don't know that your spirit was raised together with the spirit of Christ, then you are shutting down the ability of your spirit senses. You weakened your inner man. We have to come to that place of knowing that Christ, God, raised us up together with Christ and gave us a seat to sit in the invisible realm and the seat he offered to us he said to be his right hand side seat what is the meaning of right hand side it is not beside god it's not beside his right hand side the right hand side of god means his visible expression it means his righteousness it means the brightness, the visibility of the brightness of his glory. That's the meaning. And that's who you are. The journey into seeing into the spirit starts with you and I knowing that we have been raised from the dead. You know we have been shouting these things now for over six years now. All these prophets that go around prophesying to God's people, 
they are the problem of the church. What God's people need is not prophecy. What God's people need is to know who they are in Christ now. How they are in Christ now. Where they are in Christ now. We don't need prophecy. Because we, the spirit of prophecy resides in every believer. So every believer is expected to prophesy to himself. You are to be prophesying to yourself. Because you are a prophet by nature. You are a prophet by birth. The prophetic spirit is what gave birth to your spirit. The prophetic spirit is what resides in you. The prophetic spirit is the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is in everybody that is born again. So what you need is not deliverance. What you need is not prophecy. Leave these business guys that call themselves prophets deceiving people of God today by, by the things they say which they call prophets, prophetic utterance and prophecy. A child of God does not need to be prophesied on. Check the entire epistle. The writers of the epistle didn't go prophesying on people. That thing you see there, the Bible says it's for edification. Prophecy is for edification. When I meet with you, I speak the language of your spirit. You speak the language of my spirit. How do we do that? When I meet with you and I look at you and say to you, you are the glory of God revealed. I am declaring your prophetic nature. I am not to be telling you what God will do for you. I am to be declaring, declaring your reality to you. You are to be declaring my reality to me. When you look at me and say to me, you are the light of the world. You just spoke my reality. That's not prophecy. You are a savior from Zion. You just spoke my reality. That's not prophecy. So we are to be speaking our reality to one another. And not to gather God's people. And be blinding them by prophesying. You see, telling people the color of their underwear is not prophecy. Telling people the color of their house is not prophecy. Telling people the number of their phone is not prophecy. Telling people the color of their inner wear is not prophecy. Telling people the name of their father and the name of their children is not prophecy. That is not prophecy. Prophecy in the New Testament is the declaration of what the prophetic spirit which Jesus was anointed with accomplished. The declaration of the accomplishment of the prophetic spirit of God through Jesus. So, all this stuff I see all around in meetings, believers' meetings here and there, where a young man will stand before God's people and then he will, he will be calling phone number. Those things are demonic acts. Okay, after calling phone numbers of the people, how does that change them? After telling them the, the color of their inner wears and their underwears and their bra, how does that change them? After telling them the name of their father and their mother and the, and the, the, the number of trees that are within their compound, in their villages, how does that change them? 
you know now but that is what they have built the ministry they built ministry around that check the epistles and see if what they are doing out there today were done that way by the apostles of the lamb and the first class apostles that we all are reading their writings and preaching from their writings Paul said, thanks be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You see? Thanks be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us. So, when you stand before God's people and say to them, God will bless you, you are lying to them. God will, will bless you. You don't tell God's people, God will bless you. Because God had already blessed us. Thanks be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had you see this tense is there. Who had blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. So, when I say Father, I thank you because I have all provisions supplied to me. I thank you because every bill is paid. I thank you because all needs are met. You see? To many people, that doesn't make sense. They need somebody in the name of a prophet, right, to lie to them. Because 90% of people who say they are prophets out there in the world today are liars. They don't know scripture. They speak against the reality of the finished work. Your language must be the finished work. Our language must be the realities of the finished work. It is as the realities of the finished work become real in your heart the channels of your spirit opens up for you to be able to see yourself as you are in the spirit. There's a way you are in the spirit. Your body beauty is not what defines your spirit beauty. No matter how beautiful your physical body appears to be, it can never be compared with the beauty of your spirit. Christ is your life. Christ is the spirit you are. If that is true, then try to find out how beautiful Christ is. If you can tell how beautiful Christ is, then you have come to know how beautiful you are in your spirit. So, I like to see people in their spirit. I don't glory in the beauty of the physical body. That does not mean I don't tell people how beautiful their body is. I tell people how beautiful their body is. I tell my girls how beautiful their bodies, their bodies are. I tell my wife how beautiful her body is. But beyond that, I point their attention to the beauty of their spirit. Because the beauty of the physical body fades away. As you, as you advance in your body experience in the earth, the beauty of the body fades. Now, if you're going to retain the beauty of your body, you must make haste. To receive the knowledge of the beauty of your spirit into your heart. When we receive the knowledge of the beauty of our spirit, the glory of our spirit into our heart, it helps 
to keep our body young. That is the way we keep our body young. That is the way we keep our body strong. That is the way we keep our body healthy. Mm. But if the knowledge of the beauty of your spirit, if the knowledge of the glory of your spirit is lacking in your heart, your body will continue to experience effects of corruption in the earth. So when God looked at man, he knew man's problem and how to solve man's problem. He knew that the knowledge of his glory has to gain entrance into the heart of man for his body which was put on the journey of experiencing depreciation to be restored back. That knowledge needs to enter into the heart. And in his infinite mercy, he released that knowledge. So the scripture says that God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts to give to us the light of the knowledge of his glory. Many of what people do in local assemblies today, in churches today, many of the messages they preach out there are no more relevant. They are all obsolete. Many of them are obsolete. They are outdated. What we need in the church today, I speak as an apostle of Christ. What we need, according to God's agenda, what the message that is needed in the church today is not demonology. Is not eschatology. Is not the doctrine of deliverance. Is not the doctrine of prosperity. Those messages are outdated. They are no more. They are not what we need now. If need be, we visit them. But the supreme and the urgent need right now in the body of Christ. Is the, is the knowledge of Christ finished work. And when you look at Christ finished work, it is in two dimensional formats. There is the milk, there's the revelation of of that finished work referred to as milk. There is revelation of that finished work that is referred to as the word of righteousness. We need the revelation of the word of righteousness for the activation of the senses of our spirit. You see, until the senses of our spirits are activated, we will we just be acting like a man who is physically blind. The reason why you will see hundreds of people today crowding around one man in the name of prophet is because the key of knowledge has been taken from them. And those who have thousands of God's people run after them in the name of prophets and teachers and ministers, they are enjoying having God's people living in spiritual ignorance. And that is not good. Because the more the people are ignorant of their identity, the more money they make from them by praying for them. The more they pray for them, the more they give them offering, the more they give them seed, the more they give them tithe, and all of that. So they don't want God's people to be free, to come into the revelation knowledge of their identity. These are sons. These are sons of God. 
that ministers are feeding on. Instead of feeding them, they are milking them. Instead of feeding them, Jesus said to Peter, when you are converted, feed my sheep. Not milk my sheep. Feed my sheep. Provide for them the knowledge of their identity. Provide for them the knowledge of their kingship. Provide for them the knowledge of their priestly identity. Many ministers are not doing that today. They are milking God's people instead of feeding God's people. Peter, Jesus said, when you are converted, feed my sheep. Feed, feed. Don't milk them. Feed them. I will always touch their heart to supply your need, to meet your need. Okay? But your responsibility is to feed them. Don't preach in order to get what is in their pocket. Leave them with me. I know how to talk to them for them to meet your need. But be committed to feeding them. And that is why I know that anyone that the Lord brings our way and opens his heart and he, he or she receives what we are teaching, I know that if God speaks to them, to finance what we do, they will hear God's voice because their senses have been activated. It is the knowledge of your identity that activates your senses, your spirit senses. You remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus? The Bible said that the rich man died and was buried. Lazarus died and he was also buried. Their physical bodies were buried in their graves and their physical bodies decayed in the grave. Jesus told the stories of their spirits without their body at the other side of the world. Jesus said that the rich man lifted up his eyes. Don't forget that he was no longer with his physical body because his physical body perished in the grave where it was buried. So, which eyes did the rich man lift, lift up? Jesus said the rich man lifted up his eyes and saw Papa Abraham. The rich man opened his mouth and spoke to Papa Abraham by telling him that he needed water to quench his thirst. Don't forget that his mouth is part of his physical body, which perished in the grave, which decayed in the grave. So which mouth did the rich man use to communicate with Papa Abraham? Which eyes did the rich man use to see Papa Abraham? So I am telling you, us now that beside our physical five senses, we have another set of senses that are not visible but they are real. Where are these senses? They are located in our heart. Your heart is not the, the, the very thing that pumps, regulates blood in your body. That's not your heart. Your heart is not visible. That visible thing that regulates blood in your, heart, in your body is not the heart the scripture is referring to. It is, it is not in that thing that regulates blood in our, in our body that the senses of our spirit are. The heart is within the region of the spirit. The heart is not in your physical body. You see that? And that is the reason why when the body of the rich man and Lazarus were buried and the bodies decayed in the grave, the rich man was able to see. See, the moment they came out from their body, because the body itself is a hindrance. The use of the physical five senses is the reason why people are not considering the use of the senses of their spirit. But the moment your spirit drops your body, 
then it will be clear to you that beside the physical five senses, you have other senses, the senses of the spirit. So the rich man, when they dropped their body, the rich man dropped his body in death. The poor Lazarus dropped his body in death. The moment they came out from their body, they began to use the senses of their spirit and no longer the senses of their physical body. It is knowledge that opens our eyes of understanding. Our eyes of understanding is actually knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of the glory of God. You remember the scripture mentioned that it says that in the latter time, the knowledge of the glory of God shall cover the earth as water covers the sea. Jesus is an embodiment of the knowledge of the glory of God. He himself is the knowledge of the glory of God. He himself is the glory of God. So the knowledge of the glory of God, of the wisdom of God, which Christ is, when is received into our heart, it opens up the channels of our spirit, which are the senses of our spirit, which are located in the heart. In our heart, it is at that point our spirit begins to function in its full capacity in the invisible dimension. So, the body of Christ has entered its final season in the earth. The season that will bring about the manifestation of the fullness of the Gentiles, as written in Romans chapter 11. Yes, Romans chapter 11. There, Paul mentioned the fullness of the Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles is the manifestation of immortality, nature of God in our spirit upon our physical body. The fullness of the Gentiles is the weakening of our body out of its present state into a mortal state. The same way God quickened our spirit out of the formal state of it into the new state of the spirit that we are now, which, by which we were declared new creatures and sons of God, kings and priests who are unto God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for as many listening to me now who are full of desire to have the senses of their spirit activated. I thank you for bringing them to the waters, these crystal waters, for them to drink. And as they drink, of this crystal water, which is the revelation knowledge of the finished work of our identity in you. Their spirit senses begins to function, begins to be activated. In the name of Jesus, I pray. It is your will, our Father, it is your desire for us to have the senses of our spirit exercised. And so Paul wrote and said that those who by reason of use of the word of righteousness, of the revelation of the word of righteousness, have exercised their senses. So we exercise our senses via the, our, the senses of our spirit via the knowledge of the, of the word of righteousness. What is the word of righteousness? What is the word of righteousness? What is the meaning of the word of righteousness? What is the meaning of the meat of the word of God? As mentioned in Hebrew chapter 5, verse 13 and 14, what is the meat? What is the meaning of meat of the word 
or word of righteousness. What does it mean? I'll be explaining that in the next um, in the morning. That's a Sunday morning. Of course, we already this is Sunday morning already, right? But by ten o'clock today, being Sunday, I will be explaining. the meaning of the word of righteousness and the meat of the word. What the meat means. What the word of righteousness means. Father, I thank you. I thank you because you are the reason why we are still standing. You are the reason why we are still preaching. Because your grace, you told me, is sufficient. We are not looking at what we, pa- we are passing through. We are looking at truth. We are looking at you, our life, Jesus. We are looking at you, our Lord, Jesus. We are looking at you, our head, Jesus. We refuse to be discouraged. And we can never be discouraged. We thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you for as many that you have brought our way and you have opened their hearts to embrace this message. Thank you for the daily experiences and daily encounters they come into because their hearts are open to this message. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Father. So, human physical body will continue to depreciate. Except we start receiving into our heart the knowledge of the glory of God. I appreciate the medical doctors, the medical science. I appreciate them very much. I appreciate them and I love them. They are I release strength into the in, towards their direction, wherever they are. All the doctors in the world, all the nurses in the world, I appreciate every one of you. And I stand to say, despite all your efforts and your labor, Human physical body needs something much more than drugs. The human body needs the revelation knowledge of the testimony of Christ. What the human body needs for its restoration is not drugs. Am I talking down on drugs? Not at all. And that is why I first appreciated medical doctors. I appreciate the medical science. But what we restore the human body is not drugs. It's not anything manufactured by medical science. What we restore the physical body of man today is the revelation knowledge of the testimony of Christ. Unfortunately, preachers of our time are not preaching it. Ministers of our day are not teaching it. They are not teaching it because they don't know it. Many of them know it, knows it, but they, they willingly refuse to teach it because they are, in, they are doing business with God's people. They are ma- merchandising God's people. They are milking God's people. Making money out of God's people. Glory in the fact that they have money. And then in the book of Revelation, God said to them, you are poor and wretched. Because what makes you rich is not money. What makes you rich is the, is the revelation knowledge of Christ in your heart. That is the prosperity of the soul 
which God recognizes. Not money. Having all the money in the world means nothing to God. And of course, it's good to have money. It's good to have money. Don't get me wrong. I am talking about kingdom agenda. I'm talking about the reason why Jesus died. Anything that will not follow you out of this earth, the day you leave the earth, is not God's blessing to you. Does that mean we should not use material things? No. Thanks be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So there are riches, Christ unsearchable riches. They are not gold and silver. They are not cattle and camel. They are not things physical eyes could see. Then there are riches of the universe. They are gold and silver. Raw materials hidden in the earth. They are for use, but they are not what define, defines us. Because we are above the universe. We are beyond the universe. We are superior to the universe. We are from above, and we are above all. Above there means God. Above there is not sky. Above is not above your head, above my head. Above there means the within. And the within speaks of the deity of the creator. The deity of God. The deity of God is what is referred to as my within. That is where I live. That is where I dwell. And that is my being. What about you? Everything, all the happenings in the world creates uncertainty in their heart. Since, you know, it creates it creates pain in their heart. But when you turn your mind to the realities of the kingdom within, you experience true peace, true joy, and true happiness. Learn to live in the world within. Because the world within is the real world. This earth is a dream world. Nothing is real here. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Go and buy a new car now. And check out that your new car after one year, after two years. Buy anything you see to be new according to man's definition of new. And watch what becomes of that after a few years. That's Nigeria country for you. They just took the light, just interrupted the light. But just give me a second. Sorry for that. Sorry for the interruption. So sorry about that. All right, so. There are many people that are sick, and we need to pray for them. Not just praying for them. Praying for them and seeing them healed. Many people around the world today are sick. With all manner of sicknesses and diseases. I 
they said that prevention is better than cure. It is time to help men prevent themselves from falling sick. And the way to get that done is for them to receive into their heart the revelation knowledge of the testimony of Christ. Very, very important. I receive phone call virtually almost every day to pray for the sick. We spend money okay, on social media, on calls, praying for the sick from different nations of the world. These things can be prevented. And the way to prevent it is for men to receive into their heart the knowledge of Christ's testimony. The same way when you are to go out and rain start falling, what do you do? You pick your umbrella to shield yourself from the rainfall. The knowledge of the testimony of Christ in your heart protects your body from sickness and disease. It gives you confidence to attack it in your body. If at all it shows up, we do not act in fear. Pray, fear-motivated prayer is a waste of time. Some prayers are fear-motivated. Fear motivated because knowledge of the testimony of Christ is absent in the heart. Please, my fellow pastors, my fellow apostles, owners of churches, church denominations, please open your door wide and allow those that God had raised with this knowledge to come in and feed God's people, please. They won't take the people away from you. Stop being afraid of losing the people because they are not they are not your business assets. God's people are not your business assets. You know you don't have the knowledge of the testimony of Christ, which is what God designed to be used to feed his people as against the works of darkness in the earth. But you have been able to gather them together. Why not allow those that have that knowledge to come in and feed God's people? Why do you lock God's people into yourself? Jesus said to them, Woe unto you lawyers, woe unto you Pharisees, woe unto you Sadducees, he said, you have taken the key of knowledge from the people. They took the key of knowledge from the people and subjected the people to themselves. The people became their servants. They became their lord. That is the situation of things in denominational churches today. God's people are servants to the ministers. The ministers are their lords. Things has fallen apart. It's time to change. It is time to do things right. Please. Many of God's people are sick. As I'm talking now, many are sick. Last week, I was called to pray. A, a woman called me to pray for her husband who is down with cancer now. Virtually every day we receive call to pray for people. And we have been praying. But I'm saying we can prevent 
the younger generation, the next generation, from coming into this experience of every day falling sick. If we plant the knowledge of the testimony of God in their heart, it will shield their body from every external assault from demonic forces. Absence of this knowledge in their heart makes the physical body, body vulnerable. Please, pastors, bishops, prophets, open the door and allow knowledge of the finished work to be planted in the heart of God's people, please. They are God's people. They are not your people. Bring down the walls you have built around God's people. Shielding them away from the knowledge ordained for their freedom. Bring down those walls and allow the knowledge of the finished work to come in. They don't need the knowledge of demons. They don't need the knowledge of household enemy. They don't need the knowledge of generational causes. They don't need the knowledge of bloodlines. All these things they teach out there. The Bible says, God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our heart to give to us the knowledge of his glory, not the knowledge of bloodline, not the knowledge of deliverance, not the knowledge of demons, not the knowledge of Satan, not the knowledge of prosperity, the knowledge of his glory revealed in Christ Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, my 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 Father. I know that this truth is entering nations. This truth is gaining ground in nations of the world, in the hearts of men. This truth is penetrating into hearts. This truth shall be published in all the languages of the world. Father, thank you for raising ministers, able ministers, who will teach this truth. Not those that will use it for money making. Not those that will use it for fame. Not those that will use it for influence. But those that will be moved. That will see the present state of humans, those that will see their sufferings and be moved with compassion. You preach this gospel with compassion. The gospel is not for money making. The gospel is not for fame. The gospel is not for influence. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for supplying all our needs according to your riches in glory, Father. Thank you for supplying us with all that is required to fully publish this truth. For every man on the earth today to come in contact with it. Thank you for supplying us with everything required. Thank you for supplying us with the resources required for to make this truth known to every man on the earth. For that is our passion is to make all men to see this 
unsearchable truth of your glory revealed in this song. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, my Father. Your love is so real in my heart. Your love for me is so real in my heart. And that has been my strength. That has been my joy. Thank you, my Father. Thank you. I pray for as many that are sick presently and they are in the hospital. In the name of Jesus, I declare that life is released into your body. The life that Christ is, is released into your body. And every sickness in your body, I declare dematerialized now. I command every pain in your body live, to live now. In the name of Jesus, all pain be gone now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I command that waist pain to live now. I command that waist pain to live now. In the name of Jesus, I command that tumor to dematerialize now. In the name of Jesus, I command that fibroid in your body, in your stomach, to shrink now and be no more. In the name of Jesus, thank you, precious Father. As many having eye problem, I command perfection in your eyes now. I command the restoration. In the name of Jesus, your vision is restored now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I command that ear to open right now. In the name of Jesus. Ear open now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. I command that spinal cord to be restored back now. Bone, shift to your normal position and be properly aligned in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Amen. All right, thank you for joining me. <laughs> Uh, for some of us, it is late where we are watching from. For some of us, it's already early morning. I want to appreciate you for joining me. Thank you for staying true. Thank you. I have a desire in my heart, and the desire in my heart is to make all is to is for all men to come to this realization come to this knowledge to this understanding it's for all men to receive the knowledge of the testimony of God in their hearts that's the way to keep the body young that is the way to reduce the rate at which the body is aging if you want to reduce the rate the frequency by which at which your body ages then the knowledge of the testimony of Christ has to become a living reality in your heart, in your mind, and in your consciousness. This is not religion. This is reality. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love everyone who has been with me here listening and also praying for me. Stay blessed because you are God's blessing revealed in creation.
I love you all. Thank you.